Hello and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rutan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Well, fall has finally fallen in the San Juan Islands, and uh, it's crazy, but uh, it's actually starting to get cold out in the studio. I might have to look at putting the heater on before I shoot an episode, but it's all right right now. I can deal with it right now. We're going to do an interesting episode on the uh, Rashiels family out of Bordeaux. They are a very famous Bordeaux producer, uh, Lafitte Rashiels. You probably have heard of them. Most of you have. And they, d their first growth uh, demand a lot of money. And we're not going to go to Bordeaux, though. We're going to look at their project that they started in 1988 in Chile. They bought the Los Vascos uh, estate. And they've been making wine from that uh, area for a long, long time now. 88, that's a long time ago. And I am a big fan of their Carmenere that they do in uh, uh, Chile. But we're going to look at three other varietals and their Carmenere because I've always liked it. And there was a little bit of a time, well, actually, there was a time when I, I tried their cabin. It wasn't all that great. They've revamped their labels, so I'm really excited to try this lineup of wines from the Ross Shields family. And a good source told me that a lot of the barrels that they use at the Chilean effort are barrels that they used in Bordeaux and they're used barrels that they bring over from there. So good pedigree, you know they're using great uh, oak when they uh, make their Bordeaux's so they use the same oak but used in Chile. So let's get started right off the bat. This is the um, Las Vegas, Las Vascos Chromis Carmenier Grand Reserva 2019, Colchegua Valley, Chile. And this rolls in at $20. So the reason they picked Las Vascos is they liked its, uh, its um, spot near the ocean, uh, semi-arid ground, good water sources. So they felt this was the best place to start a, a, a um, project down there in Chile. They looked around to several places, but they finally chose Los Vascos. I can smell this wine already. So Carmenere is one of the uh, six grapes of Bordeaux. Carmenere. It's Merlot, Cab, Cab Franc, Petit Bordeaux, Malbec, and Carmenere. So the six grapes of Bordeaux, Carmenere is involved in that, is, is part of that. So the color on this is really dark. Um, fairly dark, almost a, like a, a reddish purple. Let's see what we get on those. Get veggie right off the bat. That is not uncommon with Carmenere. You get a lot of that vegetal notes on there. Parazines, as we say. A little licorice coming through. Also some currant notes. I'm even getting a touch of dark plum. Let's see what we get on the palate. Nice richness on the palate. Solid current but cherry notes. Get a little cranberry action underneath, which I didn't get on the nose. Good acidity. Nice structure on this wine. The Parazines are the herbaceousness, the vegetal thing, barely comes out on the backside. That's why I've always liked this Carmenere. If I want to introduce somebody to Carmenere, I try to stay away from the ones that are really vegetal, like tossed salad almost. Cab Franc from the Loire Valley can be that way as well. This has nice juiciness to it, um, good acidity. I get the licorice notes on the back end. It's, it's very edgy on the back end. That acidity kind of gives it kind of a crunchiness on the palate, which I like. Yeah, just a little bit of like, um, almost like nettle, a little bit of tomato stem coming through on the backside. But, but, like I said, that fruit, that kind of dark plum, currant, cherry notes really mask that vegetal side. But it's there, which gives it complexity, which I like. This is a very good wine. I think if you wanted to introduce somebody to Carmenere, this would be the way to go. It's 20 bucks, great price. I'm going to go B plus, A minus on that wine. Let's move on to the uh, 
Los Vascos, Chromas, Cab Franc, Cabernet Franc, Grand Reserva. This 2019. This rolls in at $25. dollars are talking a little bit more money. This is also from Comte de Chagwood, Chile. There you go. So 25 bones. Now we're getting a little more serious there. Cabernet Franc, one of my favorite varietals. I think uh, Mike Mike Sheridan and I did an episode on Cab Franc. Um, I'm not sure if this one was in there or not. But anyway, 25 bucks. Good color. Really, really dark on this one. Darker than the uh, Carmenier. Let's see what we get on the nose. Get a little vanilla bean sort of thing going on. A little bark action. Almost yeah, it gets a little kind of cola root beer thing. This is an interesting nose, for sure. Getting some red and dark fruits coming through on the nose. Definitely cherry action, and I'm, I'm thinking... There's some licorice on this one as well. A little bit of black tea, that's what's throwing me off. So there's a dark cherry, black tea, a little bit of bark, a little bit of earth action. Let's see what we get on the palate. Not as impressed with this one as I was the um, Carmenere. This seems just a little bit, uh, for lack of better words, a little bit empty on the palate. Uh, it's lacking mid palate to finish, seems to disappear, kind of like Casper, you know? Appropriate for Halloween, but not appropriate if you're spending 25 bucks on a wine. There's some vegetal notes up front, the cherry notes come through in the front, but then it just really just gets, I mean, it just disappears. It's like an apparition, you know, it's just not there. Sort of disappointed in this wine, just saying, for 25 bucks. Has a little grippy tannins on it. But like I said, up front you get that kind of cherry, dark cherry, maybe a little bit of a black tea, a little bit of licorice, but then it just, I, seriously, in the mid palate just kind of goes I mean, I can taste it on the back side. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't, that disappeared, not tasteless, but it disappears compared to the front. So it doesn't follow through in a consistent way. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed, but I really hate to uh, be too critical about a wine. I don't know why. I just, I'm here to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. I'm going to go... It's an average Cab Franc. If below average, I'm going to see minus. Certainly for the money, it's a pass. Let's move on. This is the uh, 2018, no, 19, excuse me. 2019, Las Vascos Chromas Syrah Grand Reserve. And this rolls in at $25 as well. Gotta tell it like it is, guys. I think that's why you like the show. Do you want me to be a little tougher on the wines? There's a comment I'd like to see. Do you want me to be a little bit tougher? Or do you think I'm too lenient sometimes? I don't know. Because, you know, I do the episodes. I think I'm being as honest as I can be. I try to detach any feelings about sales reps or anybody that I know involved with these. Uh, it doesn't matter to me that it's the Rothschilds family. Uh, necessarily um, so but I like to be as honest as possible because I really do want you guys to spend your wine dollars wisely I don't want you to spend 25 bucks on that wine period just saying maybe next vintage will be better I don't know so now we're on to the uh, Syrah very dark darkest of the bunch so far what you'd expect from a Syrah you can't even see through it at all 25 bucks let's see what we get on the nose A little boysenberry action. A 
a little boysenberry, a little bit of plum coming through. It's very earthy, very savory on the nose. I don't get any, uh, like, uh, what am I trying to say? I don't get any dried herbs or anything like that, but it is a little savory, like earthy. Getting on it, okay, that's what I'm getting on. Some interesting, like, dark, almost wilted red, fl uh, red flower petal notes. Yeah, let's see what we get on the palette. Nice uh, consistency across the palate. A little bit of edginess on the backside, but really, really big boysenberry notes from front to finish. A little bit of black plum thrown in the mix. Maybe some cherry notes as well. Getting an interesting, almost like a black tea licorice thing on the back side of this one. This has nice expansion of fruit right up front, across the palate, into the finish. Very consistent, good structure, good acidity, nice balance in this wine. And then the bark notes kind of, the earthiness comes out at the very back end. Not dirty, almost like baked earth, you know. I, I don't know how else to say it. You know, not like... Dirt dirt, but baked earth. And then those rose, kind of dried rose petal, I guess would be the best way to say it. Maybe a little bit of a violets. Oh, purple flower as well, coming through on the back side into the finish. And like I said, the tannins get a little bit of structure on it. This would benefit from food, definitely. I'd do this with stew any day of the week. Nice wine. Yeah, and nice long finish. Almost gets tarry on the finish, for lack of a better term. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go sol solid B plus on that, hedging towards A minus. Let's move on. This is one that uh, in the past I had a little struggle with it when it changed vintages. So let's see how it tastes now. This is the 2018 Las Vascos Chromas Cabernet Sauvignon Grand Reserve. This rolls in at twenty dollars. So. Two out of three, not bad. Let's see if we can hit three out of four on the Ross Shields line of wines from Chile. Again, very dark. You can see through it a little bit. I mean, it's, it is what it is. I'm terrible with colors, guys. you got to excuse me for that. I'm working on it, but I'm still really bad. I'm just going to tell you, it's not as black as the Syrah, but dark. Got it. You can see that. Let's see what we get on the nose. So it's a little, uh, just a tiny, tiny bit of funk, which I do not have a problem with. I'm getting a little uh, vegetal on the nose, a little parazine. Almost like a, underneath there's a little bit of a tomato stem on there. You know what I'm talking about. Definitely dark cherries and currants coming through. A little red flower as well, and those parazines really are there. I mean, I can really smell them. Like, even like a nettle sort of thing going on. Let's see what we get on the palate. This kind of reminds me just a little bit of a, the old school Napa Valley cabs that had that little sort of parazine sort of vegetal thing going on in the background. I don't know if you remember that. How many of you remember? Of course, you could afford them, you know, 20 years ago. But how, how many of you remember that kind of vegetal tone that a lot of the Napa Valley cabs had? This has that. Nice current notes, front to finish, a little bit of dark cherry underneath. A little bit of that vegetal thing coming through as well, but not overpowering. Kind of reminds me of the Carmenere a little bit. It's there, but you have enough fruit that, you know, 
people that are kind of turned off by you know having tossed salad in their wine might say, ah, this is okay. Nice acidity. I'm getting a little blue fruit note on the back of the mid palate, which is quite interesting. The fruit expands on the mid palate into the finish. Like I said, good tannins, but they're very approachable. A little bit edgy, but that's okay. This would also benefit from food. I'm actually fairly impressed with this cab. I would say this is a, if you like Loire Valley wines, this is like a Loire Valley wine fan's perfect cab because it just has that nice under vegetal thing underneath, under the fruit, under the currants, under the cherries, under the little bit of blue fruit coming through, which is quite interesting. Nice tannins, good acidity. The acidity is well, the acidity is well integrated into this wine. Solid cab for twenty dollars, and you know I think twenty dollars, personally, that's a great price for a cab. I have a lot of cabs that I recommend to my customers in that twenty dollar range. Of course, some people like to go down to the fifteen. I have a few in those right that range too that I like to recommend, but this would be a solid cab to recommend at the twenty dollar price point. And so I'm going to go B plus A minus on that one. I think it's a great job. So three out of four. Skip the Cab Franc, just saying. Of course, I'm a big Cab Franc fan, so maybe my expectations are a little bit higher. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends about this. I'd really like to, actually, not to talk about subscribers, but it's kind of cool. I'm getting really close to 700, which is, you know, I like to get there. The fact that 600 plus people watch me is, is very humbling and inspiring at the same time. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.